is someone now responsible for Riley Strain's death? I mean, talking for, about this case from the beginning, from when he first started missing to all of a sudden of him being found dead, but it is the mysteries and concerns of how he was found. Remember, disappearing underneath the bridge, somehow from the bridge to the river. Did he really sink into the river and then floated days later? What always bothered me about this case, the shirt, the pants, the boots, these are things that were on him that night. But what bothers me um, the most about this is that he could be right here in this image with cowboy boots, jeans. How can all of that be stripped away? The important stuff. But then what? Gone? I never heard of them finding anything. My chat told me that cowboy boots are very expensive. Can this be important items to people who are homeless? But his shirt is on him? I never heard of a river taking boots off. No matter the current. Probably if you were like in a crazy storm. Like crazy. But the way that this guy, Riley Strain, vanished and found dead days later... And it was so sudden when everybody was on the case and looking in the area as if somebody just, yo, let's dump the body right there. Boop. Yo, we got to leave something on his wrist. His Apple Watch. We got to leave something with him. They can track this. Let's put the watch back. The phone, gone. The cowboy boots, gone. Pants, this is very concerning things about this case. And I want to continue talking about it because there's some updates. Enough talking. I want to kind of get straight into what I found out about Riley Strand. Do me a big favor. Before we begin, my name is No. Welcome to Novicity True Crime Podcast here. Streaming both live on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, I would appreciate it if you could hit that like, that share. And if you're brand new, hit that sub button for me. Hope you guys are having a magical, beautiful night. Um, <clears throat> uh, let's continue this. Let's talking. Let's get into it. New information in the Riley Strain investigation this afternoon. His death investigation remains open in Nashville. Metro Police say interviews are still underway. In fact, one happened on Monday. Riley's death is unclassified, but presumed accidental. The case will stay open until the autopsy report is finished. Strain was in Nashville on a fraternity trip. He was kicked out of a Broadway bar and was found dead in the Cumberland River two weeks later. I, that's kind of good to hear yeah. the fact that it's still an open investigation and it's not like final, like... Like, it's not final. You know what I mean? Like, he pre it's presumed. It's presumed. This isn't final. And that, I'm, I'm happy for. I'm, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm content with that. I am. I am. That was huge. That was something we had been looking for. The Riley Strain case continues to unfold. Weeks after the body of the University of Missouri student was found in Nashville's Cumberland River, family friend Chris Dingman says they have received intel from the alleged last person who spoke to Riley before he went missing. During an interview with News Nation April 10th, Chris, who has spoken on behalf of the family several times since Riley's body was discovered, shares the significant development in the case. Person of interest that the family had been wanting to see, the homeless person, that we knew had been the last person to talk to Riley up on top of the roadway, we got to talk to finally. Uh, he actually reached out Saturday afternoon to some friends of ours that was down there talking with the homeless, uh, actually gave a statement, uh, him and another person, that Riley had come through there, uh, had been stumbling, possibly stumbled into the little fence that's right there. They asked him if he was okay. He says, yeah, man, I'm just drunk, something along those lines and they put him walking underneath the bridge north 
pass through the detention center area. That was huge. That was something we had been looking for. However, in response to Chris's interview, a spokesperson for the Nashville Police Department tells E! News that a person who originally came forward has since recanted their statement. Following detective interrogation, the person says that they had not actually seen Riley, but someone else. They that sounds like somebody don't want, to, don't want to snitch. You see what I'm saying? There is so many secrets underneath that bridge. I, this, look at that. Who does that? You know what? I'm going to retract. I'm going to fall back. Could this be a, a, just a tad bit bigger than what we thought? Like, a, 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 what, a guy who what? Fell in the embankment in the river and that's it. No, it sounds like somebody's just like, yo, you know what? I don't want nothing to do with this. Too much heat. I don't want to get in trouble. I'm not with this. This a little, it sounds like it's a little more. I'm telling y'all, I'm telling you, each week goes by. This case ain't finished. This Sebastian, Madeline, stuff like this is not finished. This is weird. That's crazy. That's crazy. Sounds like nobody doesn't want to talk. Nobody doesn't want to talk. Alicia with the 100 stars says, hi, no, from Dallas, Texas. What's up, Alicia? How are you doing? Uh, Dorian Ann with the 100 stars. Thank you so much. Uh, Deanna K with the 100 stars on Facebook. Thank you. Facebook is popping today. Shout out to all my supporters, Green Crowns and Green Hearts over at Facebook and YouTube. What's going on, guys? Good to see you guys late at night at the dark with no best city. Melly with the big 10 talking about the Riley Strain case. He says, well... Hey, beautiful No and beautiful humans in the chat with the big drop off with the 10. Super, super. I appreciate you for that super chat. Let's say hi to many over at YouTube. Thank you so much, Melly Belly. I appreciate you. How is your night going, Melly? Thank you so much. Uh, shout out to my beautiful mods, Breezy over at Facebook and K Cole over at YouTube. Let's continue. Case remains open. Riley, who disappeared on the evening of March 8th during his fraternity's trip to Nashville, was found eight miles away from where he was last seen in the Cumberland River, March 22nd. At the time his body was recovered, the 22-year-old was wearing the shirt he had on the night he went missing, as well as his watch, authorities said, but his boots, pants, and wallet were all missing. After And his phone, and his phone, keep that in mind. An initial autopsy found no foul play to be involved in Riley's passing. The college student's death was declared accidental. And while Riley's family, which includes mother Michelle Wadid and stepfather Chris Wadid, as well as father Ryan Gilbert and stepmother Millie Gilbert, have not made a public statement regarding this new development, Chris says the family believes something more than their son simply falling into the river led to his death. The late student's family ordered a second autopsy, Thank you, during again. which the coroner found there was no water in his lungs, which Chris told News Nation last month could be a sign of something more sinister. One what do you think? No. Think about it. Just for a second, chat. I want you to really think about this. You know, I was actually studying a section of this case that I, we have went over two days ago. I was going over my notes on my laptop, and I was like, you know what? Let me check on the Riley Strain case. And I pulled this video up that was dropped by News Nation, and that's why we're playing it now. And it blows my mind how... Like, okay, in certain cases, 10 to 20%, a person could have no lungs, right? Not, excuse me, no water in, in his or her lungs. But in this case, how he was found, when he was found, and let me tell you why that's important. And now, no what? No water in his lungs, but he was face down, ladies and gentlemen. They say they found zero water, like None. I get it. Maybe, maybe, hey, maybe this much. Maybe a little bit. A cap full. A little pint. How about this? Six ounces. Four ounces. Four ounces. About this much. Nope. Nothing. Nothing. But then he drowned? See, from from my knowledge, right, when I go to the swim, like, I, I would never forget this. I almost drowned Colorado, lost part of Europe, three times. I almost drowned three times. And I didn't know how to swim at the time. I was young. And 
the last time I was trying to show off. And when I was, I almost drowned, I was doing that, doing that, doing that. Somebody pulled me and I was coughing up so much water. And I, I, I was, I was coughing up so much water. Came out my nose, my mouth. But damn, I was f drowning. But for someone like Riley to be drowning and not have any water, like none, what, like what, it, it, it sounds like either two things. Number one, Riley Strain must have gotten to some confrontation where he was deceased before the water or he was nowhere to be found and he was dropped off later. I'm talking to you in uh, different ways that this could have played out. And man, when I tell you, just being found in the river just like that, I mean... And let me tell you, there was a lot of heat in this case. People were trying to find him. But guys, have you ever thought that in the map, right, they found him in a place where people are usually not there? Eight miles. Not, they were not even in the vicinity of where he was found. That's crazy. What kind of, a, what kind of water takes off boots? Kind of blows my mind. Leslie Martinez says, hey, no, how are you? Um, like I said, a setup. I'm doing pretty good, Leslie. How are you? You know what, Leslie? I'm slowly starting to think that there is some type of foul play in this case. There is. Jasmine says on uh, YouTube, my, let me put it on the screen. She actually wrote it, guys. I like putting good comments. Very good. Especially, uh, my theory is he was deceased uh, on land and got robbed and threw into the river. That, I'm starting to believe, is a possibility more than anything, Jasmine. I'm not kidding with you. Well said, Jasmine. Uh, I'm so excited for Super Chat, but it's not letting me. Oh, Crystal, it's okay. I'm sorry about that. I, it is hard to see comments sometimes without that, but it's okay, Crystal. You're so good. The debit card is in one place. It's suspicious. Isn't it funny that how Riley, Riley Strain... His debit card is at the bottom. Debit card. You know, something that you use money to buy things. See, that is misplaced. Something that is used, that's, that's money. Money. It didn't say anything about his cash. It says wallet and debit card. Why something that you can buy things with is separated from the body, separated from the wallet? Do you guys not realize a pattern here? Let me break this down for you. Riley Strain, right, goes somewhere that we cannot see, then disappears, which we cannot see. And the things that he lose are the most expensive things. Do you get it now? It is the most expensive things that are missing. Do you also want to know another thing? A credit card that is used for money is separated from the wallet. Wallet? They need it to buy things. Phone is, guys, iPhones are already expensive. Let's, 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 let's be serious for a second. If you get your hands on an iPhone, you are in good luck. Regardless if you can unlock it or not, people have ways. But you can sell it for parts, which you can get, what, 60% of the money from the selling MSRP. Things that are a part of him are gone, that are expensive. Something else is at play. I typically don't say this. Think about Sebastian or something. I'm like, or, or Madeline Soto with the mom. I'm like, eh, I'm on the fence. Eh, guys, I'm not too sure. But this seems a little more sure than anything. I don't like this. I don't, chat. I'm not a fan of this. Something is wrong in this case. Kelso with the 199 Super Chat. She says, happy Friday Eve. Happy to see you, says Kelso. Kelso, happy to see you. I appreciate you so much. Someone stole his thing, says Jasmine. I'm, I hear it. You need to know what is the toxicology is. Has that come out? No, that takes some time. That takes time. A few months, a couple months. A couple months, a couple months. We'll get it. We'll get it. We will get it. 
One thing that threw the family for a loop was, uh, you know, the coroner going on record with uh, a news person in Nashville stating about the lack of water in his lungs. Uh, it raises more questions. You know, uh, I, I'm not a crime drama person by no means, but usually water in the lungs uh, means that, you know, they were alive when they went into the water. Boy, this poor boy, man. This poor boy. Poor boy. Uh, Brandon Brown says phone seven to eight hundred boots probably one to two hundred. I have a feeling it was someone in the homeless camp and they did it and moved him down the river to dump him. So it wasn't near them, says Brandon Brown. Brandon, hey, I'm not knocking that, buddy. You're probably right, man. But the phone, you can get a lot. Of, all the numbers he just said, spot on, man, spot on. Brandon Brown over at Facebook. Thank you guys for the super chats. You guys are rocking it today. What's super chats and stars? People are they trying to get their badges up there. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Almost three weeks since workers discovered the body of missing Missouri College student Riley Strain in the Cumberland River. His family still searching for answers as to what exactly happened. Fox 17 News Kelly Avellino tells us that his family believes that they have found a significant lead, a brand new witness who is potentially the last known person to ever speak with Riley. Weeks ago, I interviewed a homeless man who says he was on the river embankment below when he heard Riley stumble into a fence right about here, just before the James Robertson Parkway Bridge, where he was last seen. Now that's... You know what's so crazy? She just said that, you know, okay, this... Okay, let me tell you something. All of this that they keep saying that homeless man said this, a homeless man retracted, they didn't want to talk no more. <laughs> this sounds like somebody did something and they did not either want to snitch or they don't want whoever is, they know they don't want a part of it. All these homeless people are saying that, well, I saw this and I saw this. One homeless man literally said Riley fell into bushes. All these homeless people that are coming out and saying this, that are on there, this is bull crap. This is bull crap. They all have different alibis to what they saying that what Riley was doing. Riley stumbled here. Riley went here. Why are all of them saying different shit? They are saying things to make us believe their narrative. Like, he fell. Boom, done. Guys, if you really want to talk about it, Where's the marks in his body of him falling from up the encampment down below? Think about it. The, the embankment was, had branches, things below, sharp shit, trees, dense trees. You mean to tell me he's going to end up in the bottom of the river with his, all this shit gone, face down? Where's the scratches? Where's the bumps? Come on, stop playing with me. Same man reported there was another passerby closer to the street who called out that Riley was okay, just drunk. Now I can tell you, Riley's family has been trying to track down this other man who saw him right here for about a month, and they say they finally have. A family friend here in Nashville says she and Riley's family on speakerphone met with this other homeless man on Monday. They say a detective also came out to speak with this man. She says the man said that Riley continued to walk beyond the bridge, passing the Birch Building on the left. He did see Riley and he did see him walk all the way down the sidewalk um, as to the corner as far as he could see. Now it's been said that Riley potentially fell right underneath the bridge, a steep and rocky fall, and ended up in the water. It's where his bank card was found on the riverbank and there's also surveillance video from the Birch Building that doesn't appear to show Riley walk by. But if it's... You know what's even more weird that I just thought of? If the home, all these homeless people, right, two or three of them, said that they saw Riley fall and all this stuff. Why no one heard him screaming and why nobody reported that? You waited for officers to confront you? But you saw him and you heard him, but not in the water fighting for his life? Something's wrong. This is bull crap. Something's wrong here. Something's wrong. Breezy with the 100 stars says, all I can say is, uh, Tennessee PD needs to retrain their officers. Summer Wells, missing. Riley, missing. Sebastian, missing. Not a good look at all. Well said. Jordan White with the 100 stars. Thank you, Jordan. I appreciate that. This man could drown in water, but no one hears it. But you can see him 
from the, mind you, there's homeless people in the embankment. He said, I looked up and you saw, get out of here with that, man. Get out of here with that. If they see him fall, why did they not check on him? The cover-up is smelling fishy, says Brandon Brown. Well, it's Brandon, you're right, bro. Brandon over at Facebook, right. It's true that Riley kept walking beyond the bridge and didn't fall somehow into the river under it, then that raises more questions as to what happened and how he got into the water. Until we have the exact information, then we're going to continue to think maybe he went outside the bridge, maybe he got into a car. Like, until we have the facts, we can only assume that he kept going or uh, we don't know that he fell. Riley's family tells me they haven't ruled out foul play since Riley was found without his pants, a belt, shoes, or his wallet. And according to the preliminary autopsy, there was no visible trauma to his body that would potentially indicate someone having an extensive fall. I would just said that. I just said that. I just said that. I just said it. Oh my God. And according to the preliminary autopsy, there was no visible trauma to his body that would potentially indicate someone having an extensive fall. What did I say? How do you, how you have no marks on your body? Indicating that you fell. Come on, man. Well, Riley's family continuing to wait for the official autopsy results to be released. Metro Police said the homeless man that they spoke to this past Monday was referencing news stories. And the other man who said he heard Riley fall said perhaps did not hear Riley fall at all. Oh, my God. Give me a break. Give me a break. Somebody did something to him in that encampment, in that embankment. Some one of these either homeless people or, or non-homeless people. Somebody did something. People are scared to speak up. They're homeless people. They must have been threatened. Somebody retracted their statement. Now he doesn't want to come forward. A homeless man. Somebody knows something. Somebody's doing something. This is bullshit. This is bull crap. No. Nicole Holder, thank you so much for the one gifted sub, Nicole. Holder, I appreciate you so, so much. Now, go hold up. Um, uh, Kelso says, uh, the dis disregard people who had to, life is sick. I feel like nobody even cared. Like, no one cared. It's more than disregard, man. More than that. I think just they people just did not care. People just did not care. Did not care. Hello, my favorite podcaster. Hello, Brit Nicole. How are you? Um excuse me, guys. Even Small to the following video. Half past the hour on your channel. Alright, guys, we're getting up to up to date videos. Hit that like, hit that share button for me, people. I would appreciate that. Facebook, we have over 200 people watching, but only 18 shares. What in the world? Facebook, what is going on? Facebook, no, Facebook. Come on, what happened to all my team and Facebook? Hit that share button. Share the groups. Share it to your personal page. I would appreciate that. Very. That's when it counts. I would appreciate that so much, guys. Thank you so much. Tuesday. Now to another case we've been following closely from day one. The family of college student Riley Strain, who was found dead in a river in Nashville, says the facts from the night he died, they just don't add up. Riley disappeared after he was kicked out of a bar on March 8th. He was in Nashville with his fraternity brothers and friends from the University of Missouri for their formal that weekend. But now weeks after his body was found, it's a text message that Riley sent to his mom that night that's bothering her. She shared that message with senior national correspondent Brian Anton during their exclusive sit down interview. Uh, Brian joins me live now. Uh, Brian, what was the text message that he sent to mom and why was it so disturbing to her? 
Yeah, this is the first time that the family is talking about this. It, it was really a very, very emotional um, interview, Mark. You can imagine uh, Riley went missing the beginning of March. His body was discovered in Nashville a couple of weeks later. We obviously covered the story really extensively. Their focus was, was so much on finding Riley. Uh, but now they say uh, that, that they've sort of had a moment to process all of this as they continue to grieve. Uh, there are so many more questions and things that have come up. And one of those questions has to do with the text message that you just mentioned. It's a conversation that Riley had with his mother before uh, he went missing and left the bar uh, about the way his drink tasted. And again, this is the first time uh, she has spoken about this, but it could be very, very important when it comes to what happened here. Now listen to what she told me, Marky. He had sent me a text and said um, that he had ordered a, he was drinking a rum and coke and it didn't taste good. And I said, well, you probably shouldn't drink it then. He goes, well, it tastes like barbecue. And I go, well, that sounds awful. And he said, um, well, it sounds good, but it's not. When a rum and coke normally tastes the same, I mean, that's not something that you really normally taste any different. Right. It has a very consistent taste. Yes. Yes. And that's why I would, I'm like, you probably shouldn't drink that then. Do you think that could have something to, to do with what happened? Um, yeah, maybe there was something in it that shouldn't have been. And so, Marky, this is now one of the... Okay, I'm not going to lie. A rum and coke has no barbecue flavor in it. I'm not going to lie. That's a little weird. That's a little weird. And... It, that, that, okay, that's weird. I'm not going to lie. That's weird. That's weird. That's weird. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Typically, I'd be like, come on now. Like, let's chill out for a second. But that, that's, uh, that's a little weird. Yeah. The things that the family uh, is zeroing in on, questioning could this have had something to do with uh, him disappearing that night? Could he have been roofied? Is this the reason that he ended up in the river? It's something they're looking into. Uh, and, uh, and it's a new revelation we're going to get into tonight. Uh, we're going to have the full conversation uh, on Banfield tonight. That's at 10 o'clock Eastern, Marky. Yeah, it makes no sense that that drink would have tasted like barbecue. And I know the two of them had yeah. a close relationship, right? I mean, this was a mother and son who checked mm -hmm. in multiple times a day with one another. And Brian, are police still actively, you know, investigating as to what happened that night? Or has that kind of been called off? Yeah, well, first to the first part of what you said, I think it's one of the most heartbreaking things about this whole story is that they were so close, that mom and son, he was an only child. You know, he had been FaceTiming her from the bar that night. They talked all the time, uh, and she knew her son very well. And she says it just it doesn't make sense, she says, the way that it's explained to her that all of this went down. She's really, really interested uh, in, in that drink. Uh, and uh, the investigation... The police say it's, it's pretty much not ongoing right now. They are waiting on the toxicology results. But there is now a, a state investigation that we've learned about, which is also new, which could be zeroing in on what happened in the bar that has to do with the drink. Uh, and that's something else we're going to talk about for the first time uh, tonight on Banfield. Yeah, we'll be watching closely. Uh, that family has been in our thoughts and prayers. And I know you've kept a spotlight on it yourself. That video is going to come out tomorrow, I think. I think that video is going to come out tomorrow. Somebody said... People were saying that it's barbecue flavored rum. What the fuck? I've never heard of that. BB flavor rum? Barbecue flavored rum. That, I don't think that even exists. Barbecue flavored rum? What the hell? No. Let me see something. Does any drugs taste like... Guys, I don't think... Because roofied, guys, you have to think about the, 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 the cutting time. Like, the time when he was in that bar, it would have had to been... Had Luke's bar, it had to been, because... He went from one bar to another one to Luke's bar. And roofies, they act quick. They act quick. There is no barbecue flavor anything. That's I just debunked that. Let's just not even, I'm not even going to get into that. What drugs taste like barbecue? 
Uh, somebody said that heroin smells like a box of band-aids. Uh, no drug. Okay, so I'm I, I personally wouldn't rule that out. I wouldn't rule that out. I wouldn't the uh, the whole drugs the, the drink with the barbecue. I wouldn't rule it out. That's something he said. It's a bit suspicious because it so happened to be around thirty minutes until he passed away. So so to say. So well, this appeared. It's a little fishy. Twenty-seven thousand people have signed a petition asking that bar staff help intoxicated patrons get a safe ride home. This comes after Riley Strain was kicked out of Luke Bryan's bar back in March. His body was found two weeks later in the Cumberland River. According to Riley's autopsy report, there was no sign of foul play. News 2's Kendall Eichmann spoke with the woman behind the petition. Riley's disappearance captured the attention across the nation. When I heard the circumstances, it was very disturbing to me, not only as an advocate, but as a parent. It was on March 8th. Riley was visiting Nashville on a fraternity trip when he was kicked out of Luke Bryan's bar. Riley is seen in multiple surveillance video clips before he disappears. After an extensive two-week search, his body was found in the Cumberland River. How could this have been prevented? What could have happened? Deborah Borza set out to help answer that question. Over 27,000 signatures later, she created the Riley's Act petition. Her proposed law would make it mandatory for bar staff to call cabs and Ubers for intoxicated individuals. Someone Ooh, that's a crazy one. That's a crazy one. That's a crazy one. Bars and cabs have to call you a cab? That's wild. Breezy says something very interesting that I'm actually like, I would be on, on bar with. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm not going to lie with you. Uh, she said, Novesity, I wonder if one of the frat brothers put barbecue sauce in his drink to mess with him. That would be very... That I can see that. I, I Personally, I can see that because they're bros, they're brothers, they're friends. I joke with that with my friends all the time. Uh, there is a barbecue-flavored whiskey, but I thought he had rum and Coke. Whiskey is whiskey. Rum is rum. There is footage that LE hasn't released and FAMI has not seen. Well, would that have would that have ha like helped at all? You know what I mean? Like whatever footage that is, I, 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 I mean, of course they have footage that we don't have. There's probably something they else do that we don't have. Barbecue sauce is thick. You could see it. Well. Not if it's mixed. And plus, he's intoxicated. He's not going to know, howdy girl, you know? He's intoxicated. Leaves a bar. They're in the city. They, they're not from here. They're visiting. Their phone's dead. They're not with their friends. What do they do? So that's kind of the, the question I'm trying to figure out how do we answer. Council member Jacob Coopin has already had conversations with bar owners and Metro Police on safety downtown since Drain's death. What? has come out of that conversation is potentially a space for a third entity to show up because the bars have said we would love to make sure absolutely that people who leave our establishments are safe. Currently, Coopin is working on a piece of legislation that looks at safety and security along the riverbank, specifically in the area where Riley disappeared. As parents and advocates, we can do better. We can do better to help kids. We can do better to help the communities. In Nashville, Kendall Ashman, News 2. Now, Deborah says she would like to get 100,000 signatures and will be sending the petition to state lawmakers early next week. <sighs> I want more investigation on this case. That's what I want, personally. I do. I do want that. That's what I want. Melly says, yes. Why hasn't it been seen? If there is nothing suspect out there. So, Melly, it's an active investigation. I believe that they are still, you know what I believe? I believe that they believe that 
someone did this. Remember, guys, we only can go based off what evidence and what we can find. But obviously, our human nature, without, we're going to obviously put the law here and what we believe here. It's two different things now. We have to go by the books. It's, it's, just, it's called law. We have to follow it. It's a standard procedure. But then over here, we have our moral ethical, ethical procedure. Like, no, that doesn't really sound right, does it? Let's do this. But we can, we can, we can go with the, our moral ways, but the law kind of sets things in a standard for our moral ways. Like, okay, law is like, okay, you may believe that, but that person is innocent and proven until guilty. You understand what I'm saying? So we can believe like, hey, someone did this. We can go question these homeless people. Someone responsible, but by law, we can't detain them. We can't really arrest them without proof. You get what I'm saying? Two different things now. Now, the most powerful thing we have in this country is our freedom of speech, but also, also the public. The public, what people don't know is that we're powerful. You do know that. It's not just the police. It's the public because I have my right to do this. Some countries, I can't even do this. You know that, right? So I have the right to do this. We have a right to dig. We have the right to believe this. And with more people on this and still talking about it, we can change this. We can make sure that the police don't close this case. We can make sure no matter if the preliminary or the main autopsy, toxicology, we can still do something about this. Think about the three Kansas City uh, friends in the back. Look at that. That's fishy. That's, that whole thing is ridiculous. Three of them died in the backyard just like that at the same time? Maybe. We don't know that for sure. But damn, they one died in a chair and two of them right next on the backyard. That's not one was like <gasps> going to reach out <gasps> or sleepy. Nah, drop, drop, drop. Like, come on. When things are fishy, we want to keep pushing for answers. And that's exactly what we should be doing in a Riley Strain case. Think about it. Man had no marks falling down the embankment. Didn't I fucking say that, people? Are you kidding me? Boots, pants are off. Phone is just off after the bridge, but missing. Credit card found at the bottom, separated from the wallet. Stop playing with me. Please stop. Stop. Remarkable interview with Riley Strain's entire family, his parents and his step parents. And they've revealed to you all sorts of information about the disappearance and death of, of Riley that we never knew before, including, and this was something that was so distressing to me, the 911 call suggesting that the operator said, don't worry about it, he's probably just off with some bridesmaid somewhere and, and he'll turn up, I'm paraphrasing, but it was uncomfortable to hear a cavalier attitude to someone calling for, for help from the authorities. Tell me a little bit more about what you've been learning about the route that Riley took uh, that night before he ended up on the riverbank. Yeah, and the rain has stopped, actually. Again, the weather has just been crazy uh, in this part of the country. But, uh, yeah, Riley Strain, of course, the young college student who went missing in Nashville, was there partying with his frat brothers beginning of March tragic story before i came here um to kansas and oklahoma i was in missouri meeting with his parents and they revealed all sorts of new information that we had never heard before they had been focused on grieving and before that finding riley are now and finding riley and now they're opening up about all of these other details uh, about what what they've learned happened that night they were able to get riley's bank records now and we now have a look and we have a map at exactly which bars he went to we, we knew luke bryan's bar but we now know all the bars and we know the order uh, that he attended those bars. It was uh, Miranda Lambert's bar first, uh, Garth Brooks' bar second, um, Kid Rock's bar third, and then he ended up at Luke Bryan's bar uh, fourth. And again, they... Okay. I want you guys to take a look at this. Miranda bar, Garth Brook, Kid Rock's bar, Luke's Bryan bar. Have a look at that. I'm going to be honest with you. This sounds like someone drunk a lot. I'm not going to lie to you. Cameron with the 100 stars says, I think uh, if they had, had had a drink, that flavor would have been found out by now. The bar would know something like that. They have a list of what they buy, says Cameron. I agree. I understand that. That's, yeah. 
Well, wait a minute, no, because the mother just came out and said that. So she just said that on the interview. She never said that before. So let, let's, let's, let's be careful. Someone says something interesting. Crystal said his head was weighted by a log. Now, let me tell you something. I want to talk about that for a second. He had something covering his head, a log or some sort. That, that is interesting to me. Do you want to know why? And guys, you better, I, I hope you can agree with me on this because I think that this part, I'm correct. Get ready for this, all right? If this guy had a log, right, a log, on around around his back head. How is that the log is not separated from him, but his boots and pants are separated from him? What the hell is so strong for that thing to come off? Do you understand me? Do you understand that, right? Think about that for a second. Why a log? He's just going to float up and hit a log or whatever that was on top of him? Could it not be that someone wanted to weigh his body down, but it couldn't because he already produced gas inside of him for, that he was deceased this whole time? Do you understand that? Do you get me? Could it be that he was deceased this whole time? Your body builds up gas when you're dead, not when, or not in by water, it's because you're dead. And they try to push his body down, would not work, and then they try to put something on him to weigh him down. Think about that for a second. But then again, his boots could separate from his foot. Come on, y'all. Come on now. If I'm thinking, I want y'all to think with me. Come on now. They've figured this out by looking at his bank records. And they've revealed something else that they've never talked about before, Ashley. It's shocking. Uh, it is a conversation, a text message conversation that Riley had with his mother at one of those bars. They're not sure which one he was at, not Luke Bryan's bar, but one of the ones before. Uh, I want you to listen to what, uh, what they said. He had sent me a text and said um, that he had or ordered a, he was drinking a rum and coke and it didn't taste good. And I said, well, you probably shouldn't drink it then. He goes, well, it tastes like barbecue. And I go, well, that sounds awful. And he said, um, well, it sounds good, but it's not. When a rum and coke normally tastes the same, I mean, that's not something that you really normally taste any different. Right. It has a very consistent taste. Yes. Yes. And that's why I'm like, you probably shouldn't drink that then. Do you think that could have something to, to do with what happened? Um, yeah. Maybe there was something in it that shouldn't have been. I mean, even if there wasn't foul play at the river, but if something happened in the bar, that's the kind of thing that could hurt someone else. Exactly. Exactly. Could play. Maybe there Hold was on. something in it. Hold on. That shouldn't have been. I mean, even if there wasn't foul play at the river, but if something happened in the bar, that's the kind of thing that could hurt someone else. Exactly. Exactly. If there was foul play in the bar, I'm surprised they're not even thinking this or saying this. If there's foul play at the bar, how is that going to push him into the river? Think about it. Come on now. The way he sound in that video with the officer, high officer, everything's good. I'm sorry. I don't know. I, I personally don't think that he was induced with some kind of drugs. It's just my opinion. I respect yours if you believe that. Don't worry about it. I think that he drunk so much, like so much. But to be induced by a drug, maybe he, maybe, maybe it was a drug. Maybe he had marijuana. That's, that's a possibility. Maybe that is so. Maybe another drug, Coke, whatever. Maybe. It's a possibility. I'm not knocking that. But to be, why would, like, okay, what could be, I, maybe the, a drug could be a variable. Maybe it's both. It was a variable for him being, acting so sporadic, falling, whatever. But that a drug doesn't push you into the embankment. Do you not understand that, guys? Do you understand what I'm telling you? There are more gates than there are an open area in the line of that embankment when you go down. 
That drugs don't take off your clothes. God. And you hear about that happening to women, but it likely happens to men too, I'm sure. From the stories that we've been told from Uber drivers and just different individuals that reached out to us that either happened to a family member or happened to them in Nashville, there's, there's something there. There's something going on in that town. It just That's feels like good. there's, it just feels like you come up to a stopping point. Every time we get somewhere, it's almost, it just feels like there's something holding everybody back from, from fully giving us what we need. And it, there's just something there. There's, mm. There is something there. It's just- Be it money or bad publicity. Or right, we, we, don't we don't know, know. but we, we, we truly want to try to help you know, this situation and help others. Nobody needs to go through what we've had to go through the way that we've had to go through it. I mean, you know, they're still telling us it's an accident. Fine. Show me the proof that you have that it's an accident. You know, I'll accept it. So now Ashley questions of whether Riley was roofied based on that conversation that he had with his mom and obviously the way that he was acting in some of the surveillance video that didn't make sense. Uh, we've learned there's a state investigation now on top of the local investigation, which apparently has ended and isn't continuing. The state now looking at cameras from the bars, according to the family, trying to figure out, you know, what he drank. Did someone slip something in his drinks? Uh, all of that now being looked at, Ashley. Well, I sure hope that the state investigators, if they find that someone slipped something into his drink and he died as a result of it, I hope they charge that person with felony murder because drugging someone is a felony. And when mm -hmm. someone dies as a result of your felony, you get charged with the resulting murder. That is so distressing to hear that. Brian, excellent digging, and I know that there's a lot more. By the way, please go get uh, shelter. Um, thank you for, you know, doing this yeah. in such bad weather down there and all the digging and all the double duty today, Brian. Yep. Thank you so much. Excellent job. Thanks, Ash. And I've got a whole lot more of Brian's exclusive interview with Riley Strain's parents coming up after the break because while they were on the ground in Nashville, and they were personally searching everywhere they could. What were Riley's frat brothers doing? Riley's mom and dad said they could not believe how these young men behaved, and you may not believe it either. Hear it all next. I know people are saying, I found a rum that's cheap, barbecue flavored, whatever. Guys, as difficult as that was for you to get, why would they serve that to him? You get what I'm saying? You asked for a rum and Coke. He did not say, give me barbecue flavored red. Come on. You get what I'm saying? And also, he says it tastes like barbecue. I have all my years of bartending, all my years of going to a bar, actually all my years of bartending. I did it for years. I'm telling you. We don't just do that. We don't just give them, ah, oh, let's give them well. I tasted rum or coke so many times. No. I don't think that somebody from Luke's bar gave the guy barbecue flavored anything. It's either two scenarios. Somebody pranked him, one of his friends. Frat brothers, come on, they prank. Let's be serious. Or Maybe drugs, maybe. I mean, guys, one drink. Out of all the drinks he had in the bars, he went to one bar. It just so happened to happen. His one, he didn't have five, four, three. No, he had one. Maybe the glasses were dirty. Maybe somebody served him a dirty glass with barbecue sauce. You guys, this, this shit happens. But just to, like, to, I don't know. I don't know about drugs. You know, I don't, I don't know. Maybe he was, maybe he wasn't. I'm not going to just put, a, put my opinion on it and say he was drugged. 100% drug, it happened. Maybe he was, but...
Riley Strain's mother says there is a hole in her heart, and it is not just the loss of her son. It is the lack of answers from... Not at Luke's bar. Kimber said it, that didn't happen at Luke's bar. It happened at 7.15. Well, guess what? That is even worse. Because if it was a drug, that it would have been happened. You understand that? Roofies take... Well, next chat, G GPT. How long does roofies take to work for an average person? Roofies typically starts to work pretty quickly. Most people begin to feel its effects within about 30 minutes to an hour after taking it. The timing can vary based on individual factors like metabolism, the amount of food eaten beforehand, and the specific condition being treated. If you're using it for the first time, it's good to monitor how you feel for a couple of hours after taking it to see how it affects you. 30 minutes to an hour. He's skinny, he's tall, looks like he has a fast metabolism. He been took this, he been, he been took this, he been took it. People who should know by now how Riley went from alive and texting outside a Nashville bar to dead in the Cumberland River. Nashville police are still insisting it was a tragic accident and nothing more. But the family is not buying that. As for Riley's brothers at his fraternity at the University of Missouri, you may be shocked when you hear how they reacted to Riley's real family when that family needed support the most. N not only that. Wait a minute. Did you just see that picture? Wait a minute. Hold on. How they reacted. Square toed. Damn, that's some good looking boots. You got some good taste, kid. And look at the boots. Wouldn't you know this? Who could, who, who could find me those boots? I would, I would, I never had cowboy boots. But I would like my first pair to, of cowboy boots to be what Riley has. Number one, it's my style. And number two, maybe I should try it on myself and my size to see how easy it is to take it off. I would love to put my, myself in his shoes, no pun intended. But there goes the boots. This has got to be difficult to take off. This is not, no way. Crystal said, leather sticks to you when you're wet. Exactly. Exactly. Doesn't this prove my theory even more? Think about it, guys. Come on. I'm going to keep this photo. And you know what's so crazy? Those jeans look very similar to that specific attire in the picture to Riley's real family when that family needed support the most. N not only that. Kimber, I did that already. It says no drugs taste like barbecue. I did that already. From my, from my knowledge, no. We got more now of an interview you'll see now only on News Nation about that drink, about the disappearance, and about what happened afterwards. Here's Riley Strain's mom and dad and step parents with our Brian Enton. They've got a, a mountain of evidence that they're working on filtering through and he has been in contact uh, several times throughout this throughout this whole investigation. Do you think that could lead to some answers in terms of maybe if there was something in the drink? I would think there's got to be cam all sorts of cameras. So. We heard there was uh, 150 cameras in Luke Bryan's bar, I believe it was. Um, we hope that'll lead to something. So, you know, it's interesting because he wasn't in Luke Bryant as long as we thought. 
you know, according to what the detectives told us timeline this week, you know, he'd left Garth and went to Kid Rock's and then spent an hour in Kid Rock's, then showed up at Luke Bryant's at 9.15, I believe is what the detective told us. He was in Luke Bryant's from 9.15 to 9.36, 21 minutes. 21 minutes. He had one beer, two waters. You know, last time I checked, every time you go into these bars, you have to show ID. Probably have One beer, two waters. Wait, what? Wait, wait, wait. What? 9.15 to 9.36. 21 minutes. He had one beer, two waters. You know, last time I checked, every time you go into these bars, you have to show ID, probably have to pay a cover. And what? so if he didn't meet the protocol to be in there after being in there 21 minutes, I can't imagine a lot changed in that 21 minutes from when he was pay paying to get in. No, it's not the waters that I'm talking about. I'm talking about the beer. Well, I'm just thinking about, uh, you know, you've got celebrity bars involved. You've got Nashville, which is a huge tourist destination. You've got a big fraternity yeah. with chapters all over the country. A lot of people who probably just would prefer that you guys stop mm -hmm. doing these interviews. Yeah, absolutely. We're not going to stop until we get satisfied with some sort of answer somewhere. It's because where we're at right now still doesn't make sense. It's still a mission. You know, the objective is still the same to find out what really happened because everything we're seeing, it's, it doesn't add up. It's not one plus one equals two. You know, if it was, we wouldn't be sitting here. The fraternity brothers had not gone to the police when they called you? Not that I am aware of. Were you surprised? Yes. Mm hmm Because why wouldn't they? The rum and coke was from the different restaurant, but at Luke's bar, he had a beer? He mixed drinks. Keep that in mind, people. He mixed drinks. When I mix drinks, I know my other friends, alcohol, beer, other stuff, you get in Toxicated. Why wouldn't they have called the police when they got back at 3.15 in the morning and didn't see him then? Why wouldn't they have called the police? Exactly. Yeah. Didn't I? Right. Right. In the morning and didn't see him then. Why wouldn't they have called the police? I don't know. So seven or eight hours had gone by from the time they got back to the hotel to when they called you. Do you have any idea why they didn't call the police until then? I don't. I don't know. We called them on the way down and it was probably close to 12 o'clock and they were just going to the sheriff's detention center, to the sheriff's office to report him missing. At, that was probably 12, 15, 12, 30, somewhere in there. So two more hours had gone by from the initial call. Yeah. They still hadn't gone yeah. to the yeah. police. Yeah. Yeah, 14 hours after his last ping of where his phone was. Do you think they were just scared or do you have any idea why? It's a million dollar question. So what happened when you got to Nashville? So when we got there, all the boys were out, well, not all the boys, but several of the boys were out front with a police officer. And um, we had to finish filling out the report. Uh, so we, we completed that and the boys stayed out for a while. And then um, they all of a sudden disappeared, all of the boys. And um, they ended up back out a little while, while later in their dress clothes to go out to their formal that night. They went to the formal? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, these are his fraternity brothers? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
fraternity brothers, roommates. Roommates. Friends from high school. We spent the next four, four and a half hours searching every emergency room to see if he was in the hospital. We come back and they're coming back, some of them from the party and they're waving at us as we're sitting in the truck. How's that make you feel? I would have thought they would have all banded together like a search group that night. Yeah, 150, 160 of them on the ground, you know, there from all different chapters. And, uh, you know, they told us that they were there. All of them were there if we needed them. We didn't know what we needed at that point in time, but you would have thought that, you know, they would have at least been out searching, trying to do something. It wasn't. Or something. So the night after he went missing, you were out searching. Mm -hmm. and the fraternity brothers were partying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What were you thinking? We weren't very happy with them, to say the least. The fraternity brothers were partying while this kid was missing? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You think you have good ass friends? What the hell? Imagine you make a report saying that he's missing. You see the fa yo, and they went. Time out. This is real. Fraternity brothers were partying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What were you thinking? Hit that share button for me, guys, on Facebook. We weren't very happy with them, to say the least. YouTube, I just need. Just 30 more likes and I'm, I'm good enough to, to go. I would appreciate that so much, guys. Thank you for watching with me tonight. It's, it's appalling. You all received a letter from someone else who was staying at the same hotel who described a little bit of what they heard that night that Riley went missing. I just want to read part of it. At first, I thought it was a bunch of drunk college kids being jealous of girlfriend, boyfriend stuff, but it was too loud and went on too long. They were in halls. I could hear them between the walls. The doors for the hotel rooms are very heavy, so they slam when you let them shut. I, w I woke up at 3.15 a.m. to numerous doors slamming kids in the hall, both boys and girls. Um, having very loud discussions, going back and forth from rooms multiple times. It was like new kids kept showing up on the floor during the entire period. These kids were freaking out about something. Were you ever able to find out what was going on in the hotel that night? From one of the friends that I talked to this week, apparently he had hurt his hand that night didn't really specify what he had done, but apparently it had to do with, with a hurt hand that night and people being emotional about it. Apparently it didn't have anything to do with Riley. Do you think there's information that his frat brothers have that they're not sharing? I would, I feel like yes, maybe. No, I mean, I haven't sat down and talked to any of them to say, tell me, tell me your whole entire story. Really? You have it? Like that. What? Yeah. Yes. What? It would be nice. Now that you've found Riley, do you feel like you have a, a different purpose in terms, I mean, do you, do you want to know everything that happened? Do you, is there like a hole? How would you describe it? Oh, of course, there's a hole in my heart. There always will be. And we may never know what happened that night, and that makes it even worse for me. But yeah, I would like to know everything that happened that day. I know, Mama, I know. I don't understand why they haven't reached out to us. Right. Wanting to provide information of that night, you know? Maybe, maybe I'm crazy, but why should we have to reach out to them and beg them for information on a missing brother. Did his brothers come to the funeral? Mm -hmm. They did. They were they were shuttled down on a bus, uh, basically chaperoned through. They were loaded back up on a bus and back to school they went again. Do you think uh, the fraternity is trying to? 
protect the fraternity? I mean, in terms of like a lawsuit or reputation or I mean, what do you think is happening behind the scenes? I think it's a reputation blow. I do. Yeah. They had a, there are a couple of things that happened while and over this last week. They had, um, they had a memorial service for him in Columbia and we were notified three hours before. Well, we know it takes three hours to get to Columbia. I mean, I thought this was a brotherhood, you know. Riley Strain's parents with our own Brian Enton. Thank you for watching. That's crazy. What is with the hand thing? Let me see what they were talking about. To when they called you, do you have any idea why they didn't call the police until then? I don't. 12, 15, 12, yeah. They still hadn't gone. 14 hours. It's a million dollar question. So when we got there, all the boys were out, well, not all the boys, but several of the boys were out front with a police officer. And um, we had to finish filling out the report. Uh, so we, we completed that and the boys stayed out for a while. And then um, they all of a sudden disappeared, all of the boys. And um, they ended up back out a little while, while later in their dress clothes to go out to their formal that night. They went to the formal? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, these are his fraternity brothers? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fraternity brothers, roommates. Roommates. Friends from high school. We spent the next four, four and a half hours searching every emergency room to see if he was in the hospital. We come back and they're coming back, some of them from the party and they're waving at us as we're sitting in the track. How's that make you feel? I would have thought they would have all banded together like a search group that night. Yeah, 150, 160 of them on the ground, you know, there from all different chapters. And, uh, you know, they told us that they were there all of them were there if we needed them. We didn't know what we needed at that point in time, but you would have thought that, you know, they would have at least been out searching, trying to do something. It wasn't. Damn. So the night after he went missing, you were out searching mm -hmm. and the fraternity brothers were partying. Mm -hmm. What were you thinking? We weren't very happy with them, to say the least. It's, it's appalling. You all received a letter from someone else who was staying at the same hotel who described a little bit of what they heard that night that Riley went missing. I just want to read part of it. At first, I thought it was a bunch of drunk college kids being jealous of girlfriend, boyfriend stuff, but it was too loud and went on too long. They were in halls. I could hear them between the walls, the doors for the hotel. Okay, so that's, that shows me that there that they were drinking. They were drinking before the bars, at the bars. All these bars looked... This sounds like drinking to me. What I don't understand, I feel like everybody that he just w set a course that night from the hotel to this embankment failed them. The bars failed them. They couldn't tell he was drunk. Jesus Christ. Bars failed them. Frat brothers not searching, asking the parents, helping out. Nothing? Fuck the frat. I don't care. This is life. What? Guys, what is a frat? L literally. Is it law? No. Are they a company? No, it's a frat. It's just like, hey guys, join my club. This is for a frat. What, like a fraternity? That stuff is not above the law. That stuff is not above having love for your brother, a human being, a friend. It's a frat. It's a fraternity. Like, what is this? but not looking for someone, your friend. Then the officer, I'm not gonna pin too much smoke on him here. Guy fell, no one helped him. He vomited over a rail, says the two tourists that passed by him. He was on the phone with his friends. They, I mean, what is going on? Guys, this is not, something is not right. We're missing either something from a puzzle of the piece, either that they, they, 
Nashville can't find. But man, it's failed all around him. It's bullshit. His family tells us they have not yet seen convincing evidence that he just fell in the river, saying they believe someone helped him get there. Metro police say a preliminary autopsy shows the 22-year-old's death appears accidental with no signs of trauma or foul play. The medical examiner adds there was no water found in Riley's lungs. His family saying that detail, as well as a lack of cuts and bruises on his body, are making the whole situation harder for them to wrap their minds around, especially considering the steep, rugged path which he's believed to have fallen down. Mm -hmm. Every time we get somewhere, it's almost it just feels like there's something holding everybody back from from fully giving us what we need. And I just, I just said that. Right. It's like we cannot get nothing about this case. They, something was literally holding this back. Every, every way in this case, video footages, no camera there, no clue there. No one to, people were talking, but then they stopped. They retracted. No interview. I'm good. Nothing to help us. To lead up, this is this case is this is a wild one. There's just something there. There's Nobody something. Yeah, exactly. needs to go through what we've had to go through. The way that we've had to go through it. I mean, you know, they're still telling us it's an accident. Fine. Show me the proof that you have that it's an accident. You know, I'll accept it. The family tells us they have ordered a second autopsy that they hope will bring more clarity. Neil. Okay. The fraternity brothers had not gone to the police when they called you? Not that I am aware of. Were you Wow. Right there. That's for me. That's wow. Frats are not above the law, but incorporate characteristics like loyalty and ethical conduct. Well, where's the ethical conduct, Millie? I don't see the loyalty. Frat boys did what? Oh, they were brat boys. It's ridiculous. This, is, this case is fumbled. If you're on Facebook, do me a favor, hit that like button for me. If you are on YouTube, consider hitting that subscribe button. Subscribe is free. It just means follow. All right. I would appreciate that very, very, very much. Um, we're live talking about the Riley Strain case. I know we're a little late, but I still wanted to go on live to stick to my word. I know I've been filming a lot on Nov Cross. I've been going live on that other YouTube channel. You can watch that other YouTube channel. It's on my face. It's on my YouTube ch YouTube page. I don't stream on Nov Cross on Facebook no more. Uh, I just stream it strictly on YouTube. But consider subscribing. Um, but I'll be on Novicity way more now than uh, No Cross for sure, for, for sure, for sure. I got a lot to catch up on all these cases, but I digress. Riley Strain's stepfather says somebody helped him in the water. Riley Strain's family is still not convinced that their son's case is not. Hold on. Right, Melly Billy, exactly. Uh, Riley Strain's family is not convinced that their son's case does not include foul play. As his stepfather now claims, he didn't fall into the river without help. The University of Missouri student was last seen on... Okay, they're going through the history. I'm not going to go through this. Okay. Riley Strain's stepfather is convinced somebody helped him into the water. Following the discovery, Metropolitan Nashville Police, that's, and that's, that's the police department, Chief John Drake said they removed something from the river. And as they removed it, they noticed Mr. Strain and called it in. Hmm. While the theory is Riley was intoxicated and fell in the water, as police say, there is no indication of foul play. His family is convinced otherwise. If he truly fell into the water, and you can prove that to me, show me, his stepfather, Chris, uh, Chris says, told News Nation, 
I'll accept it. But I can tell you from all the stuff that we've done as far as searching, looking, taking pictures, I don't feel like it's really possible to happen. He may have fallen, somebody helped him into the water. According to the family uh, spokesperson, the medical examiner who performed the autopsy said there was a lack of water in Riley's lungs. Still, there's no evidence of any foul play, according to Dr. Michael Batten. The history is that he had been to a bar. Bartender says they only gave him one drink. But that's up to the toxicology report. I don't like that statement, I'm going to be honest with you, because he went drinking to many bars. Many bartenders served him drinks, so you can't just say that. You're not going to know what drink did this if somebody spiked his drink. You can't say I don't, I don't think so. I, I, I don't know if I, I can support that. If somebody spiked his drink, how can you tell from that time frame that what bar did it? Unless you, you can see it through the security cameras. The toxicology report could come in all at once. It might say positive for this, positive for that. But it, it can't just say positive for heroin. It was in the, it was in the Luke's bar. You can't do that. It's, it being positive cannot indicate exactly, narrow it down what time of that day, that night it happened. If it's positive, then we can say, okay, we're good to go. We know it's drugs. Let's, go, let's search those cameras again. Then that can t the cameras is going to tell us. All the toxicology reports going to tell us is, yes, he tested positive from some, some drug. That's it. Riley's stepfather, who claimed that strain would likely have struck his head or sustained other injuries had he fallen directly into the water. But there was no cuts, guys. No cuts, no scrapes or anything serious like that. He told the outlet, the family has ordered a second autopsy and this and his toxicology results aren't complete yet. So his, his, his thing is not, it's not even complete guys. It's, it's not. Um, hold on real quick. You want the new channel? I'm going to pin it at Facebook right now. The pin messages is the new channel. You can subscribe there. Uh, Debbie with the 100 stars says, I'm telling you, those boys know something. They waited too long to get to the police. What the hell? I'm not going to lie. They did wait. And they're not even looking for him. That's wild. Talk about fraternity loyalty, huh? Breezy with the 100 stars says, no. They did an interview after this one. And they were asked if the brothers had something to do with it. The silence was uh, deafening. They said that the five, who's they? They said that five boys that were the last to see them with, with their dates, their dates, they have only talked to two of them out of 10 total. Ooh, only two. I wonder what was that conversation on the phone? That, that's interesting. Hmm. Thank you, Brizzy, for sending that. I didn't know that. The TC Restaurant Group, which oversees Luke Bryan's bar, claimed that the establishment only served Riley one alcohol beverage. That is the beer that we know now. During Riley's visit in Luke's 32 Bridge, our records show he purchased and was served one alcoholic drink and two waters, the statement read. At 9.35 p.m., our security, our security team made a decision based on our conduct standards to escort him from the venue through our Broadway exit. And that's going to help this establishment. That proper escort is going to help them. That's going to help them. That's not going to hurt Luke. It's not. The establishment had, he was followed down the stairs with one member of his party. The individual with Riley did not exit and returned upstairs. That's crazy. How you, how you, how you going to leave one falling fraternity brother all drunk downstairs by himself? According to the text messages, Riley's mom says she received from her son that evening that, Riley's, that Riley was uh, served a drink at a bar allegedly tasted funny. Did you just hear that statement? Listen to this. Listen, listen. Read this to me. The drink Riley was served at Luke Bryant's bar allegedly tasted funny. The only drink that was served at Luke... Wait, what? Wait, what? Wait, what? Hold on real quick. Wait, wait a minute. Wait, but that doesn't make any sense. Uh wait a minute. 
Luke's Brian's bar. The drink that was served to him was a beer. How can a beer taste like barbecue? But I thought the drink that tasted like barbecue happened at a different bar. Somebody's wrong here. Either this article is wrong, which is it's Yahoo News. Delta Chi Fraternity released a statement. The Delta Chi Fraternity is deeply saddened by the tragic passing of our esteemed fraternity brother, Riley Strain. Our, our hearts go out to Riley's family and loved ones during this incredible, difficult time. This just sounds like a core. I, I hate, I, I don't like statements like this. Like they make it sound so corporate. I don't like it. It's not organic. As we, would, we work to provide support and resources to all those affected by this tragedy. Shut up. I hate statements like this. Our hearts go out. Lovely, incredible, difficult time. It just sounds. Oh, I hate statements like that. Like I want to hear it from a person. It really gets to me. The Fraternity Campus Assisted Program, which provides in-person resources and professional support, is available for our members 24-7 as they navigate through this challenging time. Challenging time. It's not challenging time for you. It's for the family, you barnacle. Additionally, we are working closely to the University of Missouri authorities to ensure our local chapter members have direct access, direct access to campus support resources. Oh, just enough with this. I'm not reading this stuff. The family of the 22-year-old Riley Strain believes someone helped the University of Missouri student into the river where his body was discovered. Weeks after, he went missing in Nashville, Tennessee. Strain's family spoke to News Nation's senior national correspondent, uh, Brian Enton, claiming that, haven't seen convincing evidence, Strain fell by accident. If he truly fell in the water, you can provide, yeah, exactly. Like, guys, think about it. If he fell into the water, it's what I said earlier. He would have showed some type of marks on his body. Something. Like, get out of here with that. It's exactly Nicole Holder. It's scripted. It's, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. Like, like if I'm ever going to pull out a statement, it's not going to be from, a, 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 like, a PR team wrote it. We're struggling from this difficult time. <clears throat> get out of here. Get out of here with that. Just go away. We need a barnacle emoji. Crystal, you got it. You got it. Uh, so stupid. It pisses me. All right. Uh, let's look at the images that you guys pulled real quick. All right, Discord people, I'm going to have to use this. So you guys actually found the boots, did you not? Look at this. So Holly. These are the boots? These are the boots. Yeah? Oh, you guys pulled up different boots. These are all different. How can we find that? How can we find the exact ones, though? A little cream on the edge is cream color. Cream. It's like a cream. I see little cream brown black. I want to find these boots. I got. I got to do my. I got to do my digging. Netta with the ten super chat. Jesus, Netta. She says, "Isn't it crazy how we all are more involved into finding Riley than his fat brothers?" Still, so bothered by the, about this case. Right, right, Netta. Very good super chat. Right, right. That is so true. I posted the Facebook link from Chris. From 
Chris. Des posted this. Justin. Whoa. Whoa. Chris. But who is Chris Dingman, though? The Michael Kors wallet is blue. And the Justin, the Justin size 15 square boots. Justin size. These look like Justin brand boots. Yeah. Justin. These are Justin's. So you must have gave me the correct boots. Des. Yeah, I think you gave me the right boots. Guys, I don't know anything about... I'm, I'm, listen, guys, I'm from New York City. We wear Jordans. We wear Nikes. We wear... The closest thing to boots we wear, Steve Madden, Aldo. Like, I wear, like, you know, I don't wear, like, southern, like, cowboy stuff. I don't. I know nothing about that. I do wear boots, but not cowboy boots. So, I literally, I'm not kidding. I would, like, get, if I, I don't know, I don't know what to get. I don't know how to get boots. I don't know any about this, but I, I want to just try it on. I would love to just put them on. Buy them. See if it, I know you guys, I believe you guys. I believe you. Again, shout out to Netta for the super chat. Appreciate you. I believe you. But I want to have the experience myself. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to do. Justin.com. Is this it? Is this? Yep, here it is. Yeah, I got it. Oh, wow. These are actually nice. What the fuck? These are nice. I didn't believe this from the start. I hear you, Melly. A family friend. Okay, thank you guys for telling me that. Men's, let's, let's just go shopping. Okay. See, these are new. I can't sit here and say that he got new pair. If this, if this is new, then it's not it, clearly. So... Does it if we can get something as close as possible, the color doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't. But from the look of it, it looks like this. Oh, wait a minute. There was nothing on that top, was there? I don't see any design up top. I don't see nothing there. Okay, I'm I'm going to just it doesn't matter. So I it's something like this. $159. I'm not going to lie, these are actually really nice. Jesus Christ. What are you guys are turning me? You guys are turning me black to white. All right, I'm going to have to experience this myself. I'll tell you that right now. I don't know how to do this, so I'll, I'm going to, I don't know what to, do I go by like my my sneaker size or I don't know how to do this. Why? What is D-E? D's nuts? D-E double? That's, that's double. I got it. Okay, I think I know what it is. E-E size guide. Ah, extra wide. Yeah, got you. Average. Okay, I'm definitely average. Okay. I I can see what you guys are saying, actually. like, it, it, So this is real leather. Like, okay. I guys, I see what you're saying, like saying that it's, if it gets wet, it's hard to get off. How? how okay, I, I see what you guys are talking about. All right. Always mine are not just going to fall off. You have to remove them. Hmm. Interesting. Everybody is saying that. A 
Okay. I see what you guys are talking about. Why don't you just go try them on in the store? I can do that. Actually, Leslie, I can do that. But I don't own the boots. Why not just order it? Like, it doesn't matter. Like, it's just boots. Oh, uh, okay. All right, y'all. Um, okay. I am going to call it from here. It's been an hour and a half. Good podcast. Um, I think I'm, I think my, I think I want to continue my research with Riley Strain. Uh, we do have uh, more cases to talk about. Um, I do want to talk about a couple of other cases, like the girl who went on a date with the guy and he cut her up into pieces. That case is going everywhere. I want to talk about that. Even though he's caught, still want to talk about it. This mystery fifth person involved with the Kansas City moms, I want to talk about that. Sebastian Rogers, I know that the father hired two private investigators. Guys, I'm on top of this. I just haven't went streaming because of coincidences. Um, and we are going to talk about another case about a lady, a boyfriend. That's what I'm going to say. More to come on this case with Riley Strain. I'm going to have to read this. I want to read this. I want to study this thing because I didn't know that. It was details of a Michael Kaur color specific family friend this should have been given to us a long time ago this is important because this night tell us every single detail definitely rest in peace Riley Strain I am not done with you my brother trust me I'm going to put myself into your position by trying on those boots but also moving on further in details in this case alright guys if you're brand new on Facebook hit the like if you're brand new on YouTube hit the subscribe button that means so, so much to me. I'm glad I was committed to today. I hope no other coincidence would have dragged me out further and not doing this case today. I wanted to talk about this and I've done it. But um, I'm going to go live over at No Cross right after this just for about like an hour and 20 minutes. And uh, we're going to have some fun over there. But thank you for watching Novicity. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for liking, subscribing. Um, I appreciate y'all so much. Please tune into the next podcast. We're going to do that. Facebook, do me a favor before you leave, hit that like and share button for me. I would appreciate that so, so much. How many, how many shares we need over at Facebook? At least seven more. At least seven more. I would appreciate that. You guys are incredible. Thank you for the super chats, the stars. Thank you for being members. You guys are loyal, committed, and down for the Novicity Nation. I love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in with me. You guys are absolutely incredible. Uh, the suitcase case. Crystal, maybe. Guys, a lot of cases we're going to talk about. Promise you, we're not done. We're not done. I'm actually pretty excited. I can't wait for the next podcast. I don't know why, but I'm pretty excited for the next podcast. What is the, what is the new YouTube channel? It is pinned in the comments right now. Like It's pinned right, right below on Facebook. It's pinned. It's pinned. Just click subscribe. It doesn't mean you have to pay for it. It's just subscribe on YouTube means follow. That's what it means. That's all. It's, it's, it's pinned. It's, it's there. It's breezy. You mind? Uh, let's see if she did it. It's it's pinned. It's pinned. It's e it's even in the description. It's it's there. All right. Um. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you guys. I'll see you guys on Nove Cross, the other YouTube channel where we're gonna watch some Jerry Springer or something like that. All right. Uh, I know you guys are saying, no, the boots, the boots. I don't know nothing. I don't know what size. I don't know how to get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. I just don't know what I'm doing about boots. Do I like cowboy boots? Oh, yeah, they're fun. They're dope as hell. What? Absolutely. Absolutely, they're cool. They're cool. They're cool. They're cool. I love them a lot. All right, guys, let me get out of here. Peace out, everybody. Remember, send some stuff to me in DMs, by the way. If you feel that it's important about this case or any other cases, uh, join the Discord, and I'll see you on the Discord. Members, I love you very much. This is for you. You got a crown. You got all that. 
I'm, I'm here for you. I feel left out on Facebook. Cynthia, I don't know how. I'm, I'm reading comments on both Facebook and YouTube. If you feel left out, I'm sorry about that, but you're not. I see your comments. I, I'm, I'm do, reading this and doing so much. Don't feel left out on Facebook. I, I, I still talk to Facebook and everybody. All right? I love you guys. I'll see you on the new channel. Remember, do good, die great. I'll see you in the next one.